Hello everybody, welcome back to another Tea Time and Bible Study. Today we're going to go over and go through one of my favorite chapters, John chapter 8, the Gospel of John chapter 8. Such a beautiful story. Um, first of all, do you guys have your tea ready? I do. I have my favorite passionate tea. Passion. Uh, pa uh, oh my goodness, what is it? The, um, yeah, the... Oh, the passion for the goodness, the um, ugh, passion, my favorite tea. Anyway, um, okay, so let's jump into it. So this is one of my favorite chapters. Welcome, welcome everyone who's coming in. I see all your comments right here. Um, let's jump into it. This is such a wonderful story in that it reveals the tenderness of God. It reveals the tenderness and the mercy of Lord Jesus. Um, it shows his wisdom and it also shows his hatred for sin and it also reveals the wicked heart of men the Pharisees because it's interesting this chapter opens up with religious leaders the Pharisees who are self-righteous coming to Jesus and demanding that they stone this adulterous woman that they caught in the act of adultery and that's how the story begins, wanting to stone this adulterous woman. These self-righteous men want to stone this adulterous woman. It ends with um, uh, them wanting to stone Jesus. Thank you for the reminder. I meant to start with prayer. Ah, oh, amen. Let's start with prayer. Thank you so much. Amen, Lord. We bless you, Father God. We thank you for communing together, Lord God, to, you know, bringing everyone together to study your word, Lord. We pray that the Holy Spirit reveal hidden mysteries and hidden secrets, Lord, hidden in your word for the ones who truly want to learn more about you and learn your word. And we seek wisdom, Father. So would you reveal it to us through the Holy Spirit? Would you glorify your Son, my God? Would you glorify your Son, Jesus, Lord? Amen, Father God. Would you speak to us? Would you show us what you have done through your Son? And let the people that are watching learn more about your Son and your Word. Amen. Thank you for that reminder. Uh, I meant to do that. And then I obviously, I, get, I always get a little nervous right when I start. I'm not going to lie. As you've noticed, um, uh, I get nervous right before I, like right when I start. But then I get into it and I'm fine. Um, amen. So we are going to be reading from New King James Version, Gospel of John, Chapter 8. Like we said before, it opens up with these self-righteous men wanting to stone this adulterous woman. It ends with them wanting to stone Jesus. Amen. Hey, I'm so happy you guys are all joining. All right. Wonderful study. This is going to be really good. You're never going to look at this chapter again, like the same way again. You won't. It is beautiful, which is why I decided to, to go with this one. Um, the Holy Spirit led. Amen. Okay. So let's go. I'm going to, I'm going to be reading today. John chapter 8, Jesus, the light of the world. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Let me actually go over here. Okay. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now, early in the morning, he came again into the temple. And all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught him. So the Lord is in the temple, the holy temple. And he's actually going to be sitting and preaching in the women's court or the court of the women where um, you know a lot of women were gathered around and that's um, uh, he preached a lot in that area and actually over there they have 13 chests for donations for offerings to the Lord so 13 chests 12 chests were named after Jacob's 12 sons the 12 tribes of, of, of Israel and the 13th chest was for the women to, to uh, put in their offerings. So this is where he's preaching. So he's sitting down and teaching them. Then he's, he's interrupted. The scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in the act of adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act now Moses in the law commanded us that should that such should be stoned. But what do you say? 
This they said, testing him, that they might have something to which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. Let's break this down, okay? There are two laws. There are in the Torah laws against adultery. Leviticus 20:10, Deuteronomy 22, verse 22 until 24. It talks about anyone caught in adultery, a woman caught in adultery, or a man caught in adultery. Both of them are to be stoned to death. That was the law, part of the Torah. The Torah, by the way, are the five books of Moses. Um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, five books of Moses. And they were right about this is the law. They were testing Jesus because they wanted to see if he's going to, if he's a false prophet, is he going to negate what Moses has taught in his word and the law of God? They were also tempting Jesus to see if he is going to attempt to usurp the Roman authority and be a judge, you know, a magistrate over this adulterous woman, which by the way, they didn't bring the adulterous man. They, they, they just, they brought her to accuse him um, and to test him. And we'll see what the Lord, well, the Lord, what he starts doing, he starts, he ignores them. He completely ignores them. He hears them, but he's ignoring them. He knows that they're testing him. They know, he knows their wicked heart. And what does he do? Jesus stoops down and he starts writing on the ground. He starts writing on the earth. And in other versions, it says he wrote in the dust of the earth with his finger as though he did not hear. We're going to get to where I'll, 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 I'll ask this now. Where else did God write with his finger? Anyone know? Try to think, because he's going to, again, do the same thing, stoop down, and, and, and he's going to keep writing and ignoring them as they're talking to him. Where else did God write with his finger? Let's think about this. Okay. Let us down here. Verse 7. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up. He lifted his, his self up. In Greek, the word is anakupto. It means stand upright and look up. It's also used uh, when the when the Lord said it was in in um, Luke thirteen eleven where He said that you're gonna see the you're gonna look you're gonna look up lift your head up and see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great glory and His angels. Uh, so love that word. Now so He lifted Himself up and looked up at them. He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Yes, the Ten Commandments. Amen. So Jesus said, he who is, so he lifts himself up, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And then again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. So let's talk about this. Again, he stooped down onto the ground and he kept writing with his finger. So let's go back to that question. Where did the Lord, where did God write with his finger. Amen. In Exodus, writing the commandments. Exodus 31, 18, and he gave to Moses, when he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God, right? God's law was written in stone via his finger. Where else did we encounter the finger of God? writing in the dust, writing on the earth. This is beautiful. Watch this. Jeremiah 17, 13. Lord, you are the hope of Israel. All who forsake you will be put to shame. Those who turn away from, your, from you will be written in the dust because they have forsaken the Lord, the spring of living water. Those who turn away from you, because these Pharisees, you're going to see, are turning away from Jesus. They're turning away. They're turning their ear away from his, tr from the truth that he's speaking. He's calling them hi hypocrites. He's calling them essentially adulterers. They're, they're spiritual 
adulterers. These Pharisees are spiritual adulterers, which is why they end up saying, you know, we didn't commit fornication. We are of God, our father, God, uh, where that's actually incorrect because they are, they have been committing spiritual adultery and they are adulterers themselves. They're hypocrites. They don't know the father. If they knew the father, they would have known who Jesus was. And Jesus exactly, he said that. We're going to get there. But how how amazing this verse I, I was shocked when I saw it I was doing a study I'm, I'm, I studied this a little while ago and I'm like whoa Jeremiah 17 13 those who turn away from you because they will turn when when they go to stone him in the end of the chapter and he he supernaturally you know um, leaves their midst um, you know and they, they kept always turning away from him so and imagine I wonder was the Lord writing Jeremiah 17 13 in the dust of the earth, because in some versions, by the way, it says, um, let's go back over here. In some versions, it says on the ground, uh, another one on the earth, in the dust, same thing, tomato, tomato. Um, and I wonder if the Lord was writing Jeremiah 17, 13, or was he writing their names, their actual names in the earth? Because he again stooped back down and started writing again. And it's, I, amazing, like mind boggling, so cool. So good. God is just so wise, obviously, beyond our means. And it's so interesting, by the way. The Bible is written by over 40 authors, written over the span of 1,400 years in different languages, obviously, Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek. And the theme, the silver lining of the Bible is always the same. It always talks about wicked men who fell from grace, right, being tricked by the devil, by the snake and God's mercy, his salvation, that he's going to send through his Messiah's son. And again, over 40 authors and over 1400 years, almost 1500 years, and the silver lining is always the same, God's grace and mercy on, on his people, on the remnant, on the ones who choose to listen to him. Amen. Okay, let's continue. So, by the way, you see here, this is the sinner's way of treating sin. Look at the Pharisees here. They are making this a spectacle. They took this woman to test Jesus to, to prove to people that he is not of God. This guy is a false prophet. Uh, he's going to deny Moses. Watch, he's going to deny the law. And they're dying to see what he's going to say. And um, he calls them hypocrites. He says, okay, he didn't say, he, he didn't say you're incorrect. He didn't say that Moses didn't say that. He said, okay, teacher, this woman, um, they said testing him, but Jesus stooped down, wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So they continued again. Verse eight, uh, I'm sorry, verse seven. Jesus raised himself up, again, didn't deny Moses and what he said in the commandments in, in, in Leviticus 20.10, where you have to stone the adulteress. He said, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And this convicted them because not one of them is sinless. Not one of them is sinless. We are all sinners. And that's why it says if we say that we're not sinners, we are liars. We make ourselves out to be liars. Amen. So let's continue. So we stooped down again and wrote, kept writing on the ground. Jeremiah 17, 13. Then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience, being convicted by their conscience. Conscience is a great thing to have. Romans chapter two, uh, verse 12, their conscience. Conscience tells you you're doing good or you're doing evil. Conscience is something that the Gentiles had at the time and still do. Our conscience tells us that we're doing something wrong. It is the law written on our hearts that we're doing something wrong. Therefore, the wicked will have absolutely zero excuse when they're standing in front of an almighty God. Zero excuse because we know. And those that have rebelled so far and away from God, eventually they lack a conscience. They don't even hear that it's good or bad. They just keep doing evil. And who was the first rebeller? Satan. He rebelled against God, which we're going to get to because he is mentioned here. I love the Lord's wisdom. His responses are so 
good. And by the way, this is a great chapter to read. This is a great, this is a great chapter to read to um, get an example from the Lord of how you deal with mockery, how Christians should deal with mockery. We are, we, I know you guys have felt it, experienced it, you know, it, it is persecution, you know, but it's not obviously as, as rough as, as it's going to, it's going to get a lot worse. I mean, the persecution in the Middle East and Asia, underground churches, it's, it's horrible in India and Pakistan. Um, we haven't felt that yet, but we, we felt mockery. We felt ostracization. We felt slander, accusations, libel. The Lord shows us how to deal with it. Hey, refocus zone. <laughs> um, amen. The Lord shows us how to deal with it. How, do we, how does he deal with it? With, with wisdom, with patience. He eventually tells them, you are, the, you are of your father, the devil. With patience. <laughs> He's, Jesus is not politically correct, guys. He's not politically correct. He did it out of love, and he always told the truth. So in the face of mockery, Jesus used truth. Truth. The word of God, truth. The word of God and truth. And by the way, going back to 8-7, eight, uh, eight, where he said, He who is without sin, let him, thrown, let him throw a stone among her. So this word sin... Ana matretos in Greek. Let him throw a stone. Ana um, matretos. Oh, sinless. Yeah. Ana matretos means sinless in Greek. So without sin, sinless. He's saying um, without sin or even a sinful desire. Guess what? What do we know? What did Jesus say about adultery? You're, it's not just adultery when you are caught in the act of it, doing it. Adultery is when you're lusting after women in your heart or after a man in your heart. That's adultery. So he's, and I'm, he's calling them out. Well, he, ha, he doesn't expose this yet. He exposes this later on. But, um, you know, actually, they, he might have said it already. He said it already before. They might have heard it. They might have not. That they, are, they have committed adultery in their heart. Not only that, they've committed spiritual adultery with the Father because he's gonna, Jesus is going to continue to say that. Well, we'll get there. Okay, verse 7. So you continue to... so he, Verse 7. So when they continued asking him, they kept trying to get him to throw Moses under the bus. They were trying to get something out of him to go to the Roman authority and get him killed because they wanted to prove that he was usurping the authority of the Romans. But Jesus didn't give him give that to them. He just kept going with the truth that everyone is sinful, which, by the way, shows this. The executioner here, the executioner here, the self-righteous Pharisees are without mercy. They don't have any mercy for this woman. They're, they're just hoping to make a spectacle. They're hoping to, um, you know, they're showing their virtue. They're virtue signaling. These Pharisees are virtue signaling. They're saying this woman is adulterous and, and you know, propping themselves up and exalting themselves as these self-righteous Pharisees trying to follow the law of Moses and um, you know that there's they have no sign of mercy or pity on her but look how beautiful the Savior's way Jesus's way of dealing with sin he didn't say this is not a sin which by the way this is interesting um, a lot of the a lot of the early copies and manuscripts of, of John chapter 8, they actually, there's, there's a few manuscripts. Most of them have this in, in here. But a lot of, but I should say, but a, a few manuscripts, the scribes didn't write this story in there because they were afraid to say and show that Jesus was not condemning adultery. But Jesus is. He's, he's not condemning her for her sin. But he's not saying it's not a sin. He's saying, okay, well, which one of you is not a sinner? She's a sinner. Which one of you isn't? Okay, so how about we not judge one another lest you be judged by what you're judging on, right? Um, and it's just, it's, it's it, the Savior's way of treating sin is with grace. It's with mercy. It's with grace and mercy. The way that the Savior treats sin is to forgive. That's what Jesus did. And that redemption was coming in that generation 
for this woman. And he and he eventually told her, go, go and sin no more. He's acknowledging it's a sin. He's just saying, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to save you. Amen. Okay, cool. Let's go on. So good. So, so good. Verse 9. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their own conscience. Again, conscience, Romans uh Romans 2 12 it's a good thing went out one by one beginning with the oldest even to the last so they all left one by one let's go back to Jeremiah 17 13 real quick Lord you are the hope of Israel all who forsake you will be put to shame those who turn away from you will be written in the dust because they have forsaken the Lord the spring of living glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. So he was, so she was standing in the midst of who? She was standing in the midst of the people that he was preaching to. So the Pharisees left, but there was still, you know, the disciples and, and other people that came to hear the message. So she's standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up again and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has, has no one condemned you? He's asking her, are there any more witnesses? Because again, the, uh, in the law, you have to have two witnesses, two or three witnesses in order to be um, condemned, right? Well, it's supposed to be done in a court, but again, two or three witnesses, there none of them left. They, the Pharisees left. There were no more witnesses against her. No more witnesses against her. She said, no, Lord. No, no one, Lord. This is an interesting word that she used. She, she used the word Lord, but in, in Aramaic, the word Lord that she used, she used Maria. Maria is not is is um is not as simple as just like Lord or Sir, which in Greek they use the word um, kurios. So in Greek, kurios means Lord. It means Sir. It means you know it's a sign of respect. The Aramaic word Maria is a divine name. It means Lord Yahweh. She had the revelation that Jesus is Lord Yahweh. Right, Isaiah nine. He will be called Mighty Counselor. Prince of Peace, God Almighty. She had that rev she had that revelation that he was the Lord. He he came he's, he's divine. Okay, let's keep going. To 811. She said, "No one, Lord." And Jesus said to her, "Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more." Again, saying, "This is sin. Don't do it anymore." Go your way and sin no more. And again, going back to uh, Deuteronomy. So in Deuteronomy 17, 6 is where it talks about the two witnesses. So he's saying there's no more witnesses. You can leave. You're free to go. Sin no more. Amen. Verse 12. And again, Jesus didn't come to condemn. He came to save. So neither do I condemn you and go sin no more. Then Jesus spoke to them again. I am the light of the world. So he continued preaching. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Again, fulfilling prophecy. Um, Isaiah 9, 2, Isaiah 49, 6, Isaiah 61, the light of the world. The Messiah is the light of the world. And blessed are those who see just light and darkness. Amen. Okay. So now it cuts to another scene, another situation. Jesus defends his self, his, his self witness. Okay. The Pharisees therefore said to him, you bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. They're saying there's no two to three witnesses here. You're, you're boasting about yourself. You're prideful. You're so funny. You listen to Alex Jones on the other earpiece. I feel you. I understand. 
<laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's a, probably an interesting uh, situation where you have one screaming. Um, he talks loud, and I talk kind of soft. <laughs> Wags on, I closed my app. Okay. Amen. I closed my app, and I lost all your comments. Okay. That's okay. Amen. 812. Oh, 8, 813. Oh, by the way, going back to 812 for a second. Interesting. I, I love to pull up the Greek and the Hebrew and the Aramaic. Um, 8.12, the word never. When the Lord said, I'm light of the world, he who follows me shall never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. In Greek, it's actually a double negative. It, he said, never, no, never will you walk in darkness because if you're in the light with me. And in Aramaic, it means they will never be driven or pushed by the darkness. So you're never gonna walk in darkness and you're never gonna be pushed and um, you know driven by the darkness because you are walking in light. You don't wanna have anything to do with darkness. Amen. So the Pharisees said to him, you, oh, I said this, you bear witness of yourself and your, your witness is not true. Again, you lack two witnesses or three witnesses. You're boasting about yourself. You're prideful. You are, conceited Jesus you are boasting about yourself Jesus answered and said to them even if I bear witness of myself my witness is true for I know where I came from and where I am going but you do not know where I come from and where I am going you judge according to the flesh I judge no one right they're judging fleshly stuff they don't even realize that they're committing spiritual adultery because they don't know the father right but I judge no one, right? The Lord in his first coming judges nobody. He came to save the world. He came on a meek donkey to save the world. Anyone who believes in him. The next time he comes, he's coming to judge the world. Remember the father God gave Jesus all authority to judge the world. He's gonna be judging the wicked when he returns. He's not coming as a, as a lamb as he did last time. He's coming as a mighty lion king with a crown on, on a beautiful white horse, um, showing power, authority, dominion. For I judge no one. And yet, if I do judge, my judgment is true. It's righteous. It's correct. For I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. Here's I am. So the word I am, Exodus uh, 314 I am that I am it's a it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a divine title I am and we're gonna see Jesus saying I am with the father who sent me if it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true I am one who bears witness of myself and the father who sent me and bears witness of me he said there, there are two witnesses me and the father amen then they said to him where is your father where is the father? Because he's, you know, he's saying you judge by outer appearance. You judge the flesh, right? And then he says, where is your father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. Those words. Yeah, amen. Those words Jesus spoke in the treasury. As he taught in the temple and no one laid hands on him for his hour had not yet come. So again, he's in the treasury guys. He is in the, um, he is in the court of women where they were collecting offerings and treasures. And here's how beautiful, like the Lord unlocks the real treasure room, right? In his temple that if we receive him, as our life-giving light, we will, we will be forgiven and we will know God and we will know him. And that these treasures we get, these gifts from him that we get, the gift of salvation, the gift of mercy, the gift of his inheritance, Jesus' inheritance that he's allowing us to have as well, um, through his grace, right? The treasure trove of the treasure chest is treasure chest, uh, treasure chest of grace that he gives us if we listen to him if we believe in him remember these pharisees have closed ears they don't have ears to hear so they don't receive his message amen 
It's such a it's such a good book, man. I love this chapter. Okay. Uh, moving on. So 20. Those words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. Then Jesus said to them again, I am going away, and you will seek me and will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. So he's saying, I'm going away. You will seek me and will die in your sin. You will die in your sin of unbelief. Where I go, you cannot come. So the Jews said, will he kill himself? Because he says, where I go, you cannot come. This is interesting because they, the Pharisees finally realize that Jesus is talking about death here. Um... Because in chapter 7, I think it's verse 24, they, when he said, I'm going away and where I go, you will not come, he thought, the Pharisees thought he was talking about going to preach to the Gentiles. They're like, okay, well, we're not going to go to the Gentiles. So they thought Jesus was talking about living his life on earth. They eventually, finally here realized he's talking about death. He said, where, he said will he kill himself? Because he says, where I go, you cannot come. They finally realized he was talking about death, about dying. And he's saying, and Jesus was saying, you're going to die in your sin of unbelief. And he said to them, Jesus said to them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore, I say to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. You will die in your sins. Amen. Yeah. So again, this I am, this Exodus 3.14, this divine title, I am, the Lord says it a bunch of times in this chapter, I am the, uh, the eternal one, right? The ever-present one, the one, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I am he. Then they said to him, who are you? And Jesus said to them, just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. Ooh, I love this verse. Jesus said to them, just what I have been saying to you from the beginning, from the beginning. Remember in the beginning, he's not, he's saying he's alpha, right? The beginning. What did God say in the beginning? Let there be light. Jesus is this mighty light that was prophesied in Isaiah 9 too. As I've been saying to you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. Amen. They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. I went too far. Then Jesus said to them, when you lift up the son of man, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself, but as my father taught me, I speak these things. And he who sent me is with me. The father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. So lifted up, the word lifted up. So Jesus says, when you lift up the son of man, he's prophesying here as well. You're going to lift me up. You're going to exalt me. And Jesus was lifted up on the cross. He was suspended between the heavens and the earth. He was lifted up. You know, and and although people in the, in, in the world thought this was shameful, in the spirit, it was... Jesus was exalted. He was meek unto death. He died for the love of the world, for the love of people in the world. He loved, he loved them unto death. So he was lifted up. He was exalted. And, also, and then he was also exalted, lifted up, honored, crucified, right? He was honored because of the resurrection and then the ascension. So he was exalted. And he said, then you're going to see that I am the light of the world. 
when I am exalted, lifted up, crucified, die, resurrect, and ascend, then you're going to finally see that I am he who I am telling you about. And as he spoke those words, many people believed in him. Many people believed in him. He spoke with authority. And again, the son of man, the son of man who was prophesied to come, the truth shall make you free. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word and you are my disciples indeed. The Lord said, if, if the word if is used 1,522 times in the whole Bible, if, if is a conditional statement, if you abide in my word, my commandments, my truth. You are my disciples indeed. Meaning, you believe right now, but if you believe in me and then don't do, don't follow my word, don't follow my commandments, you are not my disciple. If you abide and live in Christ Jesus, in his word, in his commands, in his truth, you certainly abide as his disciple. And this is the this is the dangerous message of hyper grace, this hyper grace message of, well, if you're saved, you're one saved, always saved. That's not true. It's not true. That's not true. We are consistently being sanctified and purified and holy, you know, as we become more and more like him. But, you know, you are saved with the blood of Jesus, but you are to abide in his word. You can't just be a nominal Christian saying you're Christian fornicating and lying and killing and whatever and hating your brothers and saying you're of God. You're not. You're a liar. Romans 1. So they answered him, we, oh, and then and Jesus said, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Who is the truth? Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. And you and so you shall know the truth, which is Jesus, and the truth shall make you free. Free meaning that they're not free right now. They're slaves. People are slaves. They're slaves to sin. They're slaves of the devil. They're not free. And he said, if you know, if you, you shall know the truth, which is Jesus, that he's going to die and resurrect for everyone's sin. He takes that to the cross. And the truth shall make you free. You're literally in bondage. I'll help you. I will make you free, not just <laughs> obviously spiritually. And, um, you know, and it's, it's, it will, it will set you free. It will make you free. Anyway, they said, they answered him. We are Abraham's descendants and have never been, in, never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? They're, first of all, they're lying here. The Pharisees are saying we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. Really? That's a lie. You've been in bondage uh, under Pharaoh. <laughs> you, you're in bondage right now. You're under the Romans. You've been in bondage with the Assyrians. You've been in bondage with the Babylonians. You've been in bondage, bondage with uh, Mesopersia. You've been in bondage. What, what are you talking about? Of course you've been in physical bondage. You have been. You're also in spiritual bondage as well. <laughs> They're lying here. What, what do you mean we will be made, you will be made free? Jesus answered them. Most assuredly, verily, verily, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Love this verse. Jesus says, you know, you're a sin to slave. You're, you're a sin to, you're, you're, you're a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, right? Because a slave does their job and eventually, you know, either they, you know, die as a slave or they're released. So the ones in the house, right, the heir, the father of the house will give his inheritance to his sons that are in the house. Not to the slaves, right? Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. So Jesus also reminds them here that their ancestral lineage from Abraham 
does not guarantee them spiritual freedom. Okay, you, you, you were slaves in the, in the flesh, right? Under the Romans right now, under Pharaoh, under the Assyrians. And now, you're, but you're also slave in spiritually. You're a slave spiritually. And just because you're Abraham's lineage doesn't mean jack, doesn't mean anything. You're still in spiritual slavery. You're in spiritual slavery because you are stuck in sin. Amen. They said, I know. Abraham, seed and Satan's 30, verse 37. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak that I have seen with my father and you and do what you have seen with your father. I actually go back there for two seconds. I wanted to say something here. This is beautiful. I must admit, I almost forgot to say this and it's like, oh, it's so good. There's a reason why Jesus said, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. You have to be adopted. You have to become adopted into the father's house to have the inheritance. It's not merely just, you know, if you're stuck as a slave in sin, you're a slave you don't you don't get the inheritance here's what's interesting guys this is beautiful write this down get your notepad ready I know you guys have your notepads but write this down in Greeks permitted a son an heir right to the father's inheritance right the father's inheritance the Greeks permitted a son which is the heir to adopt brothers so in Greek sons of inheritance were allowed to adopt brothers and therefore share the inheritance with them. And we were adopted through the blood of Jesus. Romans also permitted him to free all the slaves that are born in that father's house while that father is still alive, like in the father's lifetime. So if any slaves that are born in the father's house while he's alive, they are eligible to inherit the father's kingdom, the father's goods, the father's inheritance. Look how beautiful that is. The slaves had to be born. You have to be reborn in the father's house to be a joint heir with the son. And we get that from Jesus again, dying on the cross. We have to be born again spiritually. By believing in Jesus, by being full of the Holy Spirit, we are born again. Born again. It's so good. Oh, man. Amen. Oh, isn't that powerful? Mm. Every verse means something. So Jesus says, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me. Because my words have no place in you. Now, he is ba he's saying, you're Abraham's descendants, but you're not really Abraham's seed. Because if you were Abraham's seed, Abraham was righteous. He was obedient. He was faithful. He didn't seek to murder or kill anyone. You, on the other hand, are coming here because you want to get me killed. You want to kill me. You're not of Abraham's seed. You're of the devil who has been a murderer from the start, and has been a liar and a murderer from the beginning. They answered him and said to him, Abraham, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham, but you're not doing the works of Abraham, right? Abraham was again, obedient, righteous, faithful, you, but now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. I'm telling you the truth. You're trying to kill me for truth. Just like you killed the other prophets that were preaching truth and speaking the word of God. Prophecies, you killed your, you guys, your lineage killed the prophets. But you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. 
then they're like confused they're like he, jesus keeps calling them you know you're not of abraham abraham's not your father you have another father and then he also says you're not god's children you, you don't know god so who, who who's the father he's pointing to right the father the devil he's going to eventually tell them eventually when they can't figure it out who their real father is because Again, Satan is the father of lies, the father of death, the father of murder. He's been a murderer from the beginning. Death, spiritual death, right? When Adam and Eve fell, but also, you know, Cain and Abel. He's been a murderer and a liar from the beginning. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We're not born of fornication. We have one father, God. The reason why they said fornication here is um, they're saying that we're not adulterers. We're not spiritual adulterers. We're not idolaters. Idolaters were um, finding, looking at, uh, following other gods. They're saying we're not following other gods. We haven't spiritually fornicated. Our father is God. <laughs> because again, Jesus kept saying, your father, your father, you're of your father. And then Jesus finally says, Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he who sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. For those who have ears to hear, let them hear. These, these Pharisees do not have ears to hear. They refuse to hear that they are hypocrites. They refuse to hear that they have to repent. They refuse to hear that they are not righteous and just in front of God. <laughs> they refuse to hear it. They, remember, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. They don't have ears to hear. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? Have I done any sin? Have I said anything sin? I'm telling you the truth. And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words, therefore you do not hear because you are not of God. They cannot hear because they're not of God. Because you are not of God. Then the Jews answered and said to him, do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? So at that time in Israel, there were three groups of people in, in all of Israel. There were the um, Judeans, which are the Jews. There were the Galileans of the North. And there were also um, Samaritans, which were the northern cousins of the Jews that came from Assyria who took a bunch of land in Israel and and uh, the, 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 the Judeans really hated them because they took a lot of their land and they, they, was, they were like enemies. They really, really hated one another. Uh, one would destroy some temples, the other ones would attack the other ones and there, there, was, there was a feud between them. So when, when they call him, a, you're a Samaritan, it's like saying you're a rat. You know, you're, you're the lowest of the low. It was a curse, basically. It was like a curse word. You're a Samaritan. You know, you're hated and you're stupid and you're despised. And, and, and have a demon. And demon in Greek, the word they used was um, di diablos, demon. In some versions it says devil, but he really means, you know, the word demon here, diablos. Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Again, how do we deal with mockery and slander and lies and someone trying to come against your reputation by uttering lies about you, saying you're a demon, saying you're Samaritan, saying you're, oh, you're the lowest of the low. Jesus said, you, you, you just honor me. 
but I honor my father. And I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone seeks my word, he shall never see death. So again, he says, I didn't come into my own glory. Here's what's interesting. Jesus says, most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. And this is going to confuse the Pharisees because they're saying, they're thinking, what? People are not going to die? Whoa, you're, you're just boasting. You're out of your mind, Jesus. Like, what do you mean we're never going to die? We, we all die. And Jesus was talking about the second death, spiritual death, because we are all going to die. But we're either going to live with God or we're going to see our second death. Not we. People are going to see the second death in hell. That's the second death. That's where you can never die again. You're, it's, it's spiritual death. It's, mm, it's ongoing forever and ever. You shall never see death. Then the Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead and the prophets. Everyone's dead. And you say, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. And you're greater than our father Abraham who is dead and the prophets who are dead. Who do you make yourself out to be? You are boasting about yourself, Jesus. You're saying that you're never going to die. So you're saying that all Abraham and the prophets died and anyone that follows your word will never die. They're not understanding. He's not talking about the flesh. He's talking about spiritual death. He's talking about the second death that is to come. So you, you, you're making it all about yourself. We have to like worship you, that you're special. You're a false prophet is what they're thinking. Amen. Separation from God is hell. Absolutely. I don't want to be separated from God. I mm -mm. I feel his presence here. I can't wait to be fully with him there. Ooh, in heaven. Um, Jesus answered. He has, he has an interesting answer. I should bring this down a little bit. He has an interesting reply in terms of they're expecting him to keep boasting about himself. But instead, he Jesus doesn't boast about himself. He never does. He always points to the Father. If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father who honors me, and whom you shall say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And again, he always points to the Father. He said, the Father honors me. I don't need to boast about myself. I wasn't sent here on my own accord. It was the Father's will to send me here. I'm telling you the truth, but you don't want to hear it. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I would, I would make myself out to be a liar. I shall be a liar, but I do know him and I keep his word. So again, in the face of mockery and judgment and slander and all of that, just speak the truth. And if they don't want to hear it, they don't want to hear it, but speak the truth. Or, you know, dust, the, dust your feet and move on, keep moving if people don't want to hear the truth. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it. What? So Abraham saw two things. Abraham saw the plan of God for redemption through, through the Messiah. But Abraham also physically saw the Lord. Abraham physically saw the Lord. Genesis 18, 1 to 8. Uh, also Genesis 18, 19 to 20. Genesis 19, 24. Uh, when Abraham was sitting and he's, he was sitting in his tent and he saw the Lord coming with three men, three angels. Abraham physically saw the Lord and he also saw the Lord's plan, Father's plan for the world of redemption. So he said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. So he saw the Lord, Jesus, before and, you know, <laughs> This is it. I'm, I'm he. And he was glad. Then the Jews said to him, you are not yet even 50 years old. And have you seen Abraham? You're boasting. You've seen Abraham? Like, you must be out of your mind, right? And Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Now... This, every single Jewish person understands in that time what he is saying. 
When he says, <laughs> I am, that is again the divine title of God. Exodus 3.14, when God was talking to Moses in the burning, burning, burning bush, I am that I am. This is the divinity of God. Jesus is claiming to be God. He says he's the son of man, but he's I am, the great I am, the mighty God, which obviously to them is blasphemy. Blasphemy. And by the way, this, this verse, John 8, 58, when people, especially uh, it's popular in the Islam culture where, you know, in, in Islam, Muslims always say, Jesus never claimed to be God in the Bible. Show me a verse where he's God in the Bible, where Jesus said, I am God. John 8, 58. That's exactly where John, where, where Jesus said he is the, he is God. John 8, 58. And, and, and Muslims retort and say, no, it doesn't stop trying to say I am as God. Well, no, that's actually exactly what Jesus was saying. It was very well understood that that's what he was saying because the Jews right away, the Pharisees right away, in verse 59, they picked up stones to, to throw at him. They knew exactly what Jesus was saying. Jesus was claiming to be God. And in their eyes, in the Pharisees' eyes, Jesus was committing blasphemy. Blasphemy. And in Leviticus 24, 16, you stone the man who commits blasphemy. They knew exactly what Jesus was saying, that he was saying that I am God. Again, so there it is, John 8, 58. Whenever someone says, well, Jesus never said he was God, John 8, 58. Yes, he did, because that's the reason why they picked up the stones to, to kill him. Again, this is all about context as well, knowing what what their perspective of the um, Jewish Pharisees was at the time. This is blasphemy. And then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself, supernaturally, Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so he passed by. Amen. So they supernaturally didn't perceive him, you know, Jesus somehow walked right through. They were about to stone him, he walked right through and walked right through them. Amen. Yeah, Jehovah's Witness also do not believe God, Jesus is God, that's right. They believe that he is the, uh, I think they think that he's um, Archangel. Um, yeah, they, they think he's like the brother of, of Lucifer, <laughs> like demonic. It's like, no, Jesus is God and he's been there from the beginning and he created everything and through him everything was created. Goodness. Amen. What a beautiful chapter. A beautiful, beautiful chapter. Amen. Wow. Praise God. <clears throat> Praise God. So again, we see the offender, the accuser. Remember when, you know, they came with this adulterous woman. They came to accuse her, just like their father, the devil. The devil was, is an accuser. And what was your question about the prophet? Yeah. And so again, the accuser comes to destroy, to kill, steal, and destroy. The accuser comes, oh, and by the way, the accuser, the Pharisees, right? The, they said the offenders, the adulterers, that um, they fall under God's law, right? Under God's law. So yes, Leviticus 20, 12, that leads to death. That leads to death. So when you sin, adultery is worthy of death which is under the law. But again, Jesus came to set us free from the law. He freed us with his grace, with his blood. So it's just so beautiful how, man, how good God is. You know, Jesus showing his wisdom. They were saying he, he's crazy. Does that sound like a crazy man to you? Does that sound like a crazy man to you? When he says, you know, again, they're saying, you're crazy, Jesus. You're insane. You're of the devil. And Jesus says, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar, but I do not know him and keep his word. Does that sound like an insane person? Nope. Sounds like wisdom to me. Sounds like wisdom to me. And again, they couldn't handle it. They couldn't handle the fact that he was calling them out as hypocrites. They couldn't handle that he was the son of man. They were expecting a Messiah to come and to be of the fleshy, 
like they are, to um, condemn everyone, kill everyone with stones, and you know, anyone that's a sinner, and let's get rid of the Romans, and, and coming with mighty force and anger and all of that, they weren't expecting the Son of Man to be a meek uh, Galilean, who again, three sets of people, Galilean, Judeans, and Samaritans in Israel at the time. And the Judeans, the Jews, were very self-righteous. They thought that they were the best of the Jews in Israel, that the Galileans, eh, they don't know anything. They're the Northern ones. They don't, they're not as righteous as we are in the South, in Jerusalem. Amen. So, man, it just shows God's wisdom, his grace, his mercy on us, that even though we sin and we have sinned and every day, you know, we're growing closer and more holy and more sanctified with him and um, his Holy Spirit just, just changes us and we are a new creation because of the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. It's so good. It's so good. I love it. What did you guys, um, do you guys have any comments on this chapter? Someone said, I have read this many times, but I have never understood it like this. Amen. Um, yeah, I told you guys that this chapter, once we go through it, you are never going to see it the same way again. You are never going to see it the same way again, which is why I love Bible studies. And I love reading verses in Hebrew and in Greek and doing, I have a bunch of study books that I study from. Yes, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Amen. The Lord did not come to condemn us, but to save us. He didn't come to judge us and say, you're an adulterous woman, you know, you're worthy of death. She is. Again, the law is to show that we are sinners. The law is to show that we are sinners. That's why the law was given to, to, to the Jewish people, to the Israelites, to show them that they were sinning. Because if you didn't know that it's a sin, uh, well, the Gentiles, actually, the law is written on their heart. So we have no excuse because our conscience tells us that we're sinning. Um, but, the, but the Jewish people had it in on tablets. They had the laws of Moses. They had the, well, the laws of God, the Torah. Amen. It's so good reading it in context, going really deep into it. It, it like, oof, it is powerful, powerful. Let me see if there's any other note, any other notes that I missed. Cause I always take a lot of notes. There was one other thing that I wanted to say. Yeah. Another time. Amen. So good. Yeah. Hmm. Amen. Yeah. Virtue signaling. That's right. Amen. Any other com Oh, any other comments? Oh my goodness. I actually closed it again. So I lost your questions. Hey, Amen. Well, this has been a lovely tea time and Bible study with y'all. So awesome, so beautiful. I want to remind anyone that's in here um, that I am actually going to be posting this Periscope, this video, this Bible study, into my YouTube channel. So you can check out my YouTube channels, subscribe, um, ring the bell if you want notifications. I also put some, you know, readings in there. Um, I put some other random political stuff and also some testimonies. And I'm actually going to be, guys, I'm going to be finally recording my testimony, how I got saved, what happened. It's long and that's why I've kind of been avoiding it, but the Lord has put it on my heart. I have to make this. And people have been emailing and, and DMing me and asking, can you please, you know, what happened? I want to know your testimony. It is, you know, glory to God. It's long and it's very interesting. And I'll give you a snippet. I mean, um, I was in Jerusalem speaking of blasphemy, I was blaspheming God in Jerusalem at his holy temple that, you know, the remnants of his holy temple blaspheming God and people, his people that were praying at the Western wall. And in the midst of me blaspheming God saying, Oh, look at these idiots praying to a God that doesn't exist. God opened up the heavens. And that moment I will never forget. It was a 45 minute moment and I could have stood there my whole entire life. Let me tell you, the glory of God fell. I was full, 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 full of the spirit. I didn't know it then. 
I, as an atheist, I stood there thinking, wow, this is what heaven feels like. I mean, I'll just tell every amazing emotion you can ever think of. Every amazing emotion. Joy, exhilaration, happiness. I mean, I can go on and on. I'm, I'm going to make a video about this. So, hey, man, um, I have to do it. And it's, the t it's time to do it. It's time to, yeah, just... Just, just do it. It's a long one. It's going to be like an hour and a half, maybe two hours. I might make two parts of it because it's, there's, the Lord spoke to me and pro prophetically and said some, some things and it all happened. It all came to pass and it was like, was mind boggling. But yeah, God is really good. And so check out my YouTube channel. The link is in my profile. So if you click on my profile, you will go to my YouTube channel. You'll see it. I'm going to hopefully post it by the end of this week the end of this week so it's so it's so good oh amen yeah it was moving I mean it changed my whole life I'm telling you like when atheists say oh God's not real you know the foolish say that God doesn't exist you know that God's not real Proverbs 14 1 no when you experience heaven and the father and the son I mean I've, I've seen Jesus in my dreams I've had some prophetic dreams as well. I've had some end times dreams, guys. I have, I have a lot to share. And it's finally time to release it. I've been sitting on it for years. Um, so let's start with my testimony. Um, glory to God, because I was a wicked sinner. <laughs> and as we all are. And um, he just, his grace and his mercy. And uh, I love studying and reading the word with you guys. It's so good. It's such a time as this, right? Esther 414, which was really fun to go through with you guys. Yeah, I, I can't wait to watch it. It's, ugh, oh man. Yeah, so pray for me as I'm gonna share this testimony because there are so many bits and pieces that I don't wanna forget. I wanna make sure I get everything in there because again, it's just a testimony of Jesus and it all points to him, glory to God. Man, God is not dead, amen. He is alive, Alpha and the Omega, John chapter eight, so good. So, oh, by the way, wanted to say one more thing before we tune off here. So here is going to be the structure of the Bible study. So we have these tea time Bible studies, Monday and Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. And on Monday, starting from this upcoming Monday, we are going to start with Romans, starting Romans chapter one, verse one. We're going to do about three chapters each time. And um, we're gonna go all the way to the end to Revelation. So we're gonna start with Romans. So every Mondays, all the Mondays are gonna be Romans 1-1 and, on, and onward. On Wednesdays, it's going to be random. It's gonna be whatever the Holy Spirit leads. For example, John chapter eight, we're gonna go through Genesis 1-1. We're gonna go through um, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel. We're gonna jump around, but I'm gonna keep that the Wednesdays are before Romans, so anything before Romans, whatever the Holy Spirit puts on my spirit. If you ever have something you want to go through, DM me, you know, message me, comment, and uh, we will absolutely go through it um, in, in Jesus' name, hopefully. So, but yeah, I mean, we're going to really get through it all. And uh, so Romans chapter one will start on Monday. So Mondays will be Romans on through to the Revelation. And then Wednesdays are going to be random uh, Psalms, Proverbs, whatever the spirit leads. Also, I wanted to say, I should have said this in the beginning. I, I told you I'm really nervous in the beginning. I, I always get really nervous when I turn the camera on. I forgot to mention some things. I forgot to pray. Oh my God, Lord, forgive me. Um, <laughs> so uh, congratulations to Thomas. So Thomas won the book, the um, tactics book. He won the, you know, contest. He, you know retweeted the the, the the Esther Bible study. So anyway, congratulations to Thomas. You know you're the winner. You I got you sent you a DM. Um, it is in the mail today. I'm putting it in the mailbox today and you will receive it soon. So enjoy it. God bless you. Um, God is a good gift giver. So love to give as well. Wow. Grandpa is a doctor of theology and has his testimony is amazing as well. I want to hear all of your testimonies, guys. We should all make YouTube videos and send it to each other. And I want to see all of your testimonies. Testimonies is my favorite thing to find out. It's my favorite thing to ask. I love asking, hey, what's your testimony? You know, it's so good. Every, it's always so interesting. Eight, mm -hmm. Oh, man. 
Amen. Yeah, this is the time to read the Bible, to study the Bible, to be prepared. Amen. This is the time. My favorite time of the week, tea time. Me too. Yeah, I love tea. So I'm Russian. I love the tea. Ooh. I love tea. Too, someone said too embarrassing to share your testimony. By the way, I want to say one more thing about tea time. I don't know, like, should I share it, Lord? Should I not share it? Should I share it? I'm trying to feel his presence because he'll say, I feel his presence when the answer is yes. Yeah, I'll say it. Um, when I was back playing poker, when I was a pro poker player and playing poker for a living um, for six years, uh, I hung out with a bunch of poker players and they would smoke weed all day, like literally all day. And I'm ashamed to say it, I would join in with them here and there. And um, I don't smoke anymore, thank God, thank goodness. But they would call their, you know, like the wicked time, they would call it tea time. It's tea time, like tea, money, or tea time, meaning like it's wee time, it's wicked time. And it's so awesome how I was, I was like, Lord, what should I name this Bible study? And tea time came to mind. Yeah, this is all part of my testimony is to play poker, I was on Survivor, I found the Lord, but um, I, we used to call it well, my friend used to call it tea time. So it's so beautiful how it's like done in a 180. And now tea time is to study the word. It has such a new meaning for me and I love it. And it's like, it's really cool that it's turned into Bible study. And so glory to God. Um, I'm proud and I'm happy to say tea time and Bible study because it's, that's, that's what it means to me now. And it's also great to have lunch and tea and, you know, just go through the word. It's so beautiful. <laughs> It's embarrassing to say that because I'm embarrassed by it, but you know, it's my past life and we're a new creation. And what's also cool is that I don't even have an urge to drink anymore. I used to drink, I, used to, I mean, I was, I'm Russian. So we would drink quite often every dinner. You'd have like a glass of, well, a glass of wine is fine, but you know, alcohol and whiskey and all of that. And even though I wasn't really a heavy drinker, I have no urge to drink anymore. And I'll once in a while drink wine, but I'm starting to get really convicted. Not that drinking wine is a sin because Jesus was drinking wine, but I don't even want to drink anymore. I don't even want to drink wine. Um, I don't want to drink at all. And I'm like, glory to God. That's only the Holy Spirit that can do that because the flesh, like I, my flesh loved it. And it's like slowly being cleansed of everything. And again, it's okay to drink wine. Um, the Lord did it. You know, it's not a sin, but everyone is different is is just convicted differently different things they have to cut out for me it's not a stumbling block i can have a glass of wine once every 10 months it doesn't matter it's not a stumbling block for me it's, if it's a stumbling block that's a different story but you know everything's in moderation exactly um what tea is your favorite my tea uh, passion fruit i couldn't get the words out of my mouth when i first started the, the passion fruit so i also again love this my little teapot and i got it on amazon i can share the link if you guys want in my little Tea cup, the passion fruit. And the passion fruit, English breakfast tea, and um, Earl Grey has like always been one of my favorites. Really, really one of my favorites. Yeah, I did a lot of world traveling. Did a lot of world traveling. Again, this is all part of my testimony. I'm gonna go through it. Uh, it'll be on my YouTube. Tea time. I love it. Amen. Passion for Jesus is infectious. Thank you for educating me. It's glory to God. It's only the Holy Spirit that leads us to Jesus, to the Father. And when you love someone, when you're in love with your bridegroom, you're the bride. We're the bride. The church is the bride. We are waiting and anticipating the wedding feast in the heavens with Jesus. And it sounds crazy to the world that doesn't believe. But to us, we know it's the truth. We are looking forward to being married and wed to our bridegroom, which is the Lord Jesus, when he returns, right? When he returns. Thessalonians 2, um, being lifted up in the air. And I love talking about the Lord, so it's so good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna... Someone said, um, it's brave to share personal stuff. Thank you. Yeah, I... Uh, uh, it's I'm, I'm 
I say it like it is. I, I, I it's scary sometimes, but it's it's good to be just honest. And I'm gonna share a lot, actually. I'm gonna share a lot because the testimony has a lot of stuff. But um, I'm gonna share a lot, a lot, a lot. So look forward to my YouTube. The Lord already told me. I have so many titles. He told me he was like this, 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 that. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> amen. So it's all coming. Um, it's all coming. I'm gonna be open about a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Amen. Thank you for moderating and muting. Any other, uh, I'm going to let you guys go in a little, like a little bit. Is this pre-recorded? No. I'm looking at your comments. How could it be pre-recorded? <laughs> this is live. Yeah, we can go on forever about the Lord. Amen. We are all one body. Amen. Can't believe passion fruit is known to calm you down. I didn't know that. Yeah, thanks. Casina. I have to figure out, by the way, how do you pronounce your name? Can you write, write it out? My buddy, my brother, who's going to join us in Periscope. He's going to join in our Bible study. Can't wait. Rob is here. Amen. Looks forward to the testimony. Thinking about writing a book. Um, the Lord has shown me a book that he wants me to write. Um, I don't really want to write a book. <laughs> But the Lord has shown me and he's told me through uh, some prophetic friends and pastors that I've, I haven't even ever met. They told me that there's a book that the Lord is going to uh, release. Um, so if it's God's will, amen. yes, <laughs> it's his will. So, And he's told me privately that he will. So I, I don't know what it's going to be about, but I thought it was going to be politics, but we'll see. Or, you know, or testimony or whatnot. Can't wait. We've been wanting to ask you about your testimony. I knew it was powerful. Oh my gosh. It is, it's divine. It, literally, I, I can't wait. I, I can't wait for you guys to hear it. It's the heavens literally opened up. I heard angels singing. I mean, and not only, I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll tease you with one more thing. The Lord mirrored to me. There was two witnesses to what happened that day my Jewish friend, Mark. We had the same experience for 45 minutes. And I, again, I'll tell you in the testimony, but when I figured out that, that that was the Holy Spirit, when someone told me that was the Holy Spirit and I felt the glory of God, I actually went back to my friend, Mark, and I said, I haven't spoken to him in years, and I sent him a Facebook message and I was like, Mark! You're not going to believe it. That thing that we experienced, that amazing, profound spiritual experience that I will never forget. It was the most amazing moment of my life. I said, that was the Holy Spirit. I said, dude, God's real. Jesus is real. And he was like, Anna, you lost your marbles. Like, you're crazy, girl. That's that's not what it was. And I, pray, I still pray for him. So pray for Mark to get that revelation. So again, the Lord does things and witnesses it. I had two witnesses, me and Mark, and my friend Mark, that we experienced this. And and the, the Lord used that to show me that I wasn't crazy. That what I was experiencing with the heavens opening up, it, it wasn't... Because, again, I was an atheist blaspheming God, and this happened. The Lord reminded me 10 years later when I was actually saved. Can you imagine it took me 10 years to realize that God was real? 10 years after that experience, which, again, there's more to it. Man... 10 years went by like oh how was I so stupid to not know that was God and that was heaven that I was feeling and the glory of God it, anyway it's okay it's part of my testimony and the Lord had me go through certain things to talk about it but anyway um just it also shows how uh, how amazing God is that even though I was blaspheming God he poured out from heaven his mercy his love I was literally making fun of God and people and his Jewish people and Christian people praying to him. I was calling them idiots. And the Lord is like, oh, my daughter, you don't know anything right now. You know, took a cup and just poured out on me, poured out his mercy, his love, and his Holy Spirit. I was encompassed with liquid love. I was full of love. It was so good. It was so good. Yeah, it's powerful. Two, two witnesses and, you know, oh, snap. I just remembered. Two... There will be two in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. I pray, Lord, that's not Mark. I pray that he's saved in Jesus' mighty name. 
in Jesus mighty name wow welcome to some people that it's their first day on Periscope welcome welcome I, I'm only broadcasting this on Periscope for now I'm trying to figure out YouTube and Facebook I do once in a while but um, amen so good and another thing I want to apologize about is and something I want to apologize about I noticed I touch my hair a lot in my last video uh, I touch my hair when I'm nervous and I get really nervous with the camera on but so I apologize I'm gonna stop I have not been doing that I've been more mindful of it um, so I apologize it was really annoying to watch me constantly like touch my hair like Anna put your hand down stop touching your hair um, no it's not cranberry juice this is tea I just put a lot of tea leaves in it in it it's not cranberry juice I, I, I wouldn't lie to you <laughs> Lord is my witness I am not lying this is tea which is why I talk fast sometimes a lot of caffeine amen amen twitch I don't know how to use twitch uh, I'm not that technologically savvy I'm learning I'm learning amen praise God did I learn poker from my dad I did not I did not learn poker from my dad I fell in love with poker I'll stay here another few minutes guys I want to respect everyone's time as well um, I did not learn poker from my dad. I learned it when I was 17. Um, I was playing handball, very, you know, not professionally, but uh, competitively. I wasn't that good, but I loved it. And I got into poker when I was 17 and I fell in love with Survivor. So there was two things that I always wanted to do, which was play poker for a living and be on Survivor, which glory to God, <laughs> did both. Played poker for a living for six years. It paid through my college, paid through everything my rent my bills I uh, made a decent amount of money online I mostly played cash and online tournaments online and then I was lucky enough to be ch and yeah, lucky but <laughs> it, it was the Lord's will um, it, it was I, I wasn't supposed to get on survivor in terms of I butchered my interview but God's grace uh, I was supposed to get on it and he allowed me to get on it and I so I filmed survivor got back from Survivor and I got saved. 2015 I filmed Survivor, 2016 I um, started questioning God and if he was real. And 20, I'm trying to remember if it was 2016 or 2017 I was actually saved. I think it was 2016 but again I was I, I, I was saved but I, I didn't know any Christians so I was still living in the world as a born again Christian and the Lord convicted me, convicted me, convicted me and in two, 2017 was I was getting even more convicted and in 2018 I was yeah about two years in 2018 is when I was like whoa I'm really living in sin here and I repented and I followed the Lord so yeah it took it took time <sighs> should have read the Bible because by the way be careful who you surround yourself with because I had Christians in my circle I actually knew one Christian I knew two Christians the first one told me that this Bible is outdated that um you know fornication is not a sin and all of that she told me the Bible is outdated <gasps> so the only Christian I knew told me the Bible was outdated so but the spirit was telling me otherwise I was getting convicted and then the Lord showed me in a dream it's also in my YouTube video I may uh, the Lord gave me a warning dream check out my YouTube video I explained it all the Lord sh took me to hell <laughs> and showed me the consequences of sin and how real hell is and how uh, how heavy sin is it's a heavy heavy thing to put around your neck the yoke of the enemy is heavy so that is in my YouTube as well go check that out it'll it might scare you <laughs> it scared me when it happened to me 